Now with a functioning reservation script, I wanted to add a email confirmation um, or an email stating if there was a conflict, allowing the person who uses this form to be aware uh, if their event actually was created or if not, instead of just hitting refresh and maybe looking at a calendar, uh, looking at a link to the Google Calendar. So I'm going to start off with file new, and I'm doing a script file. I'm doing this to entirely separate out the HTML. It just helps, um, it helps me organize the code. So I will put a link to this in uh, the description, um, but here's the little HTML snippet I use. It's, uh, it's set up, it's kind of a receipt type format. It's pretty simplistic, but it works, it works well for me. I've used it on, on a number of projects. Ah, uh, and here I, I attempted to save it now, but I'm getting this syntax error because it's obviously HTML and not JavaScript yet. And when I did make a new file, I did make a scripting file. That email.js file is a scripting file, not an HTML file, because I'm going to store this all within a function uh, and my function name creatively make email. Now I'm going to go at like 500 speed, I think, just to go through me formatting this. Basically, I'm making it one long string. Um, and if you notice the slashes at the end of the line, in JavaScript, that slash allows me to continue the string to the next line. I then make sure to use double quotes throughout the HTML, but um, at the beginning and end of it to indicate the string, just a single quote. Okay. Now we're back to the regular code, the code.js uh, file, and I'm going to start working on my get conflicts request, uh, get conflicts function. What I'm going to be adding is this if statement. I want to um, set a variable equal to the subject or the head header of my message and also a, a message itself, which is what I'm doing right here. So if conflicts.length, so if the event, if when we check for other events that we receive any conflicts, what we're going to be doing is request dot header so and I'm going back to that request object that I made in my get submission function request request dot header equals confirmation so if there are no conflicts which would be the case if conflicts length is less than zero um, then we are going to have the header uh, be confirmation a string confirmation And then else request.header, and this is if conflicts. The conflicts get conflicts function, of course, we made in the last video, but it is calendar, get events, and then request date, request end time. I should have added return conflicts length at the end of this function now, and I, I forget to do that. I will do it in my debugging stage. I wanted to point that out. Now, I want my JavaScript um, variables within my make email function. So I'm going to add a single quote and then plus request.header to get the header in there, plus and then add that single quote again. And that way we can start getting variables within make email. I will need to pass on request. Uh, so I have a make email now as a parameter, which is request. Now the actual text of the message goes here. So I'm going to get a message that would go along with the idea of an event being confirmed or a conflict. So if my conflicts.length returns less than one, returns zero, your, the message will be your appointment has been scheduled. If there is a conflict, then there is a scheduling conflict. Please reschedule. And there we are. I put in that conflicting message. Now I'm going to throw in all the other variables of request. So I'm going to provide information such as request.name, request.date, request.time. Um, and again, each time using these single quotes and then plus tag variables within my string. Um, I do add time here twice, which is a mistake that I'll be correcting later on. 
I also put in their reason. I thought that could be helpful to them. Now, I'm going to go down and at this point I need to add, yes, I need to add a function to actually send our email. So send email function and yep, Google Apps Script, uh, there's a function right there, so what do I need? Send email message. And I like this format that they're using to recipient, subject, HTML body. I'm going to use uh, that format as well. So mail app, send email, parenthesis bracket. Close all that out, otherwise I will forget to do so. Two, our two is going to be from our form. And using my get submission function, I pulled from the spreadsheet the email. Uh, I haven't done that yet. Aha. So I have time stamp, name, reason, date, time, email. So I need to add that. So this dot email equals. There we go, sheet dot last row, and that was six. And I explained all of this also in a previous video. I'm returning all of the information from our submission. And I set this equal to request. If you look down at the main function, get submission equals request. And so that's what that object becomes. Anyways, uh, mail app to request.email, as I just made above, request.email, uh, or this.email, which becomes request.email. So my subject of the email. Now this is what we were just creating. So subject equals request dot header. Yes, that is the header that we created for our email uh, a moment ago. Add that comma. HTML body. Right. And that HTML body is going to be, as I point out here, make email. You do need to return, right? So also make sure you make sure, as I do, you want to return all this so it actually the function creates that. And I point out here my function make email, and then I proceed to write the wrong thing. HTML email. Um, I'll also crack this in debugging. Oh, and I pointed out, yes, mistake. I should have written HTML body make email request, not HTML email request, because I named the function make email. All right, and now we need to do some updating to this main function. So we're going to go ahead and call the send email function request. Something I do want to point out here, if um, above this in my if statement in main, if get conflicts request is less than one, that is solely for the updating of the calendar. Okay. So the reason I'm doing that is obviously we would only want the event to be created if there were no conflicting events. That is what that if statement does. The send email out is out of that. Uh, the, the calling the send email function is out of that because we do want to be sending the email regardless. Because if there is a conflict, we don't want an event created, but we do want that email sent to be notifying the person that there was a conflict. Uh, with their event. And I'm thinking debugging. So that I'm going through these changes, make email, ah, request dot in time. I, I, I reference in time somewhere else and I hadn't updated it right there. So request should end time should be request dot end time. And let's see here. No errors, conflict. This would make sense because it should be conflicting because we only just hit run. So whatever the last event is, it went down to that last row, 
and it ran through that last set of information again at the bottom of our spreadsheet. Our last event was Mickey. The date format is also atrocious, so I want to work on that first. All right, so request.message date. Yeah, so to get the date a little bit better, we're going to have it put out in a normal way. The best way I, or the way I prefer to do this, is I'm going to do request.get date request.date get month add one because the months start at zero and then request date get date which will be the actual day and then finally request.date and this is our date variable uh, that we created get year and that way and if you notice plus single quotes um, slash it will be put out in a, in a much more readable way. And then to make the time more readable, I do request.time to local time string. And as I stated earlier, for some reason I put time in here twice, so I just get rid of that. That should take care of the formatting. Okay, let's run all of that again. No bugs. Let's go back. Perfect. And there was a conflict because, again, we're just running through the previous code. So that looks much better. Now I'm going to race through another form. Let's see. Donald Duck. Pain. Ooh. Okay. And the results. And here's a confirmation notice. All right, so there was no conflict that time. Our appointment has been scheduled. There they are on the calendar. So now the guests or the person making the reservation will receive that email notifying them that they have an appointment um, or that there is a conflict and allowing them to act appropriately.